In this episode of Lifespan News, the 2020 Century Summit will be held virtually in December. Aged blood makes young cells old. Researchers use lung organoids to study COVID-19. One Skin has released a senotherapeutic skin cream that claims to reduce senescent cells in aged skin. AI and longevity meet in a new book. Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of Life Extend Show, or X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's own YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the new X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find a link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. While you're there, be sure to watch X10's new channel trailer. One of our featured YouTube channels is Science to Save the World, and they just released a video about cell visualization and virtual reality. There's many technical advancements and scientific discoveries we need to achieve to solve the human aging problem, and understanding more about human cells is obviously paramount here. We encourage you to watch this full video by clicking the card above. You can also find a link in the description below. For our first story, the 2020 Century Summit is a virtual conference that will be held in December. The Century Summit will bring together top leaders in business, media, policy, and research to discuss the implications of the 100-year life. Convened by the Longevity Project in collaboration with Stanford Center on Longevity, the Century Summit will offer leaders an opportunity to present new visions on how society can restructure work, reorganize our cities, enhance lifelong learning, create new financial security, and promote greater health and vitality in the new age of longevity. Each day will offer new insights and opportunities to develop a holistic understanding of the implications of the longer life. Registration is free, so we hope to see you there. For our next story, aged blood makes young cells old, and vice versa. A team of researchers, including Dr. Tony Wyas Corre, co-founder of Alkahest, has discovered that exposing young cells to aged blood causes their gene expression to become akin to aged cells. Likewise, exposing older cells to young blood changes their gene expression to a younger signature. RNA analysis showed that hundreds or thousands of genes are altered depending on the cell type and these cellular reactions vary wildly. Even cells that are only indirectly exposed to blood factors are shown to have altered gene expression. The study also pointed out that as we age, visceral fat produces the pro-aging blood protein CCL11, which is singled out in this study as being systemically harmful. One thing that this study makes very clear is that the exact biological relationship between blood and age gene expression will require significant effort to fully understand and it's likely that advanced algorithms and data analysis will be employed in examining this relationship in each cell type. However, this research appears to offer us a difficult yet direct path to a therapy that will induce partial rejuvenation in humans at the gene expression level. If we are able to safely replace the pro-aging factors in our blood with youthful ones through plasmapheresis or another method, such a therapy could potentially provide a path to broad, systemic rejuvenation across a great many of our cells. Moving on, researchers are using lung organoids to study COVID-19. Using a novel 3D lung organoid model, new research published in Cell Stem Cell has shed light on the body's infection response to COVID-19. Collaborations from several United Kingdom and South Korean institutions were recently able to successfully create long-term cultures of a type of lung cell called alveolar cells. So far, it's been challenging to keep lung cells alive in vitro. After isolation, the cells were suspended in 3D on matrigel hydrogel and exposed to a specialized composition of growth factors. This produced lung organoids, which are miniaturized, simplified versions of organs that can be used for studies. The researchers then used these organoids to test the effect of COVID-19 infection on alveolar cells. The researchers found dramatic transcriptional changes in the cells following infection, and some of these point towards possible research avenues to pursue. However, the system has shortcomings. It only has one type of cell, and the small number of donors might not represent the general population. But at the same time, this research is a useful tool for understanding diseases like COVID-19 and for investigating lung biology more generally. 
If you want to learn more, then as always, check out the link in the description below. For our next story, a new company called OneSkin has released a senotherapeutic skin cream that claims to reduce senescent cells in aged skin. OneSkin claims that their product OS-01 improves senescence biomarkers such as P16 expression and senescence-associated beta-galactosidase. OneSkin's data are available in a preprint paper which you can see here. The researchers compared their peptide with rapamycin and noted that peptide 14 promoted the maintenance of the overall structure in their 3D skin models, while rapamycin on the other hand caused a detrimental effect in overall skin structure, including a thinner and more disorganized epidermis. How useful this product is remains to be seen, given that there is currently no published data for its effects in humans. Launching a product prior to conducting a detailed human study that shows efficacy is typical of the cosmetics and supplements industries, and we would urge caution here as with any product. While there is apparently a pending human study in the works, anyone jumping on the bandwagon now is entering largely uncharted territory, unless you have plenty of money and are willing to develop a science-based approach to taking and quantifying supplements, it would be prudent to wait for the human study data to arrive. But with all that stated, the researchers behind this seem sincere, and if efficacy in a human study can be demonstrated, and skin aging visibly delayed or even reversed, it could encourage increased public interest. For our final story, AI and longevity meet in a new book. Leaf's Arcadia Mazin has reviewed a new book about the role of AI in longevity research. The book is titled Live Longer with AI by Tina Woods. Arcadia says, Live Longer with AI explores current concepts, raises pressing questions, and tells fascinating stories of discovery and innovation. A large part of the book is dedicated to interviews with some of the field's leaders, including Aubrey de Grey, Alex Zavarankov, and our own Keith Comito, president of Lifespan.io. Arcadia calls the book a demanding but rewarding read. You can check out the book review in the link in the description below, or just go read the book. That's all the news for this video. Before you go, there's a few quick, free, and simple things that you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already, please make sure to like this video, share this video on your social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, and also if you haven't already yet, make sure that you're subscribed and you have the notification bell turned to all notifications. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.